Twitch streaming, what do you really need to spend money on when getting started? Okay, so I'm going to assume for the purposes of this video that you're doing PC streaming, meaning that you are streaming games primarily from your PC, not from a console like an Xbox or a PlayStation or anything like that. I'm just going to focus on PC streaming for today. And specifically, what I want to talk about is there's a lot of things you could spend money on when you're getting started and a lot of things you might think, do I need this? Do I not need this when getting started with Twitch streaming? And what I want to focus on is the things I think you should spend money on and what you really need to get started and what will make your uh, sort of journey with Twitch and the content that you create uh, better and more engaging for your audience. So this is just my recommendations. This is just my list. It's by no means the exhaustive, complete, and correct list. There are things on my list that you could spend money on and uh, things that you might skip depending upon what you're gonna do. And I'll try to talk about those different variations as I go through each thing. So just as a you know reminder, this is my list. It's the things I chose to spend money on. It was the things that sort of made the most sense from my perspective and sort of the most bang for the buck. So what I'm gonna do is talk about my choices and I'm gonna talk about some alternatives, but this is not a buyer's guide either. Uh, this is not really like me laying out like five different choices of microphones and talking about the pros and cons of each uh, microphone choice. Um, it's not like that. What I'm gonna do is walk you through my specific things. So have to get started with Twitch. Um, so most basic obvious things, right? You need a Twitch, let's just hit the basics, right? You need a Twitch account. That's free, twitch.tv or twitch.com. Sign up for a free account. Uh, when you sign up for an account, uh, it will give you a stream key. Um, you wanna always keep that stream key private and to yourself. Uh, the stream key is how you will link streaming software with your channel and how uh, you will uh, enable live streaming for yourself to work at all. So number one thing you gotta have, you gotta have a Twitch account, you gotta have a stream key. Both of these are free. Um, you'll not really need to pay Twitch any money for any of this. Uh, you just like, without that though, there's just no getting started. And I am gonna focus on Twitch today. Um, I don't stream to Mixer or to Facebook.com um, or any other like alternative like streaming platforms. Um, I primarily do content creation for Twitch and YouTube. So I'm gonna focus on Twitch for the purposes of this video. Um, if you're streaming to Mixer, there's probably still some stuff in this video that will be helpful and applicable to you, but some of the specifics might be a little bit different. Um, and since I don't really stream to Mixer, I'm not going to try to talk about that stuff, try to address it. So number one, Twitch account, it's free, gives you your stream key. Um, I'll do a separate video on how to actually get started from zero, like how to take your stream key, how to you know bring that into software, like you know how to get started with like encoding, all that, we'll, we'll get there. But today is like, how do you get started? What do you spend money on? So first thing is totally free. We spent zero dollars so far. We created a Twitch account. Okay, the next thing we need is we need some sort of broadcasting software. That's an important way to think about yourself, I think, when you're a content creator on Twitch is you're really, a, you're a broadcaster. The same way that uh, someone could be a broadcaster on the radio or a broadcaster on TV, you are an on-air personality, more or less. And you're primarily an entertainer. And so you need some kind of broadcasting software. Uh, the most sort of like popular like choice here is what's called open broadcasting software. Uh, but OBS is an open source, which means it's basically, f without getting like very pedantic about what open source means, it means it's free to use for you. You don't have to pay any money to use OBS. Um, and so you could download OBS, set up everything you need, and get started with streaming, and you're still at zero dollars spent as far as like, you know, we're not counting that initial cost of having a PC. Uh, we could do a whole like series of videos on like what kind of PC you need for streaming, but I'm just gonna sort of assume you've got uh, the PC for the purposes of this video. So OBS is the most popular. A good alternative to OBS to look at is Streamlabs OBS. Sometimes uh, people just call it slobs. So S-L-O-B-S, slobs. Uh, Streamlabs OBS is actually the software that I use. It's just OBS made a little bit more user-friendly, a little bit easier to use. Uh, it's got like, it also comes with like some things like you can sign up for an OBS uh, Prime account, uh, which gives you access to themes, uh, widgets, alerts, uh, lots of stuff like made in a kind of like a Streamlabs store that you can download. Uh, it also gives you the ability to do uh, merch, 
you can uh, get have a dashboard for Streamlabs where you can get statistics and data about your streams. Although you'll get that for free on Twitch.tv, and the data is really not any that diff much different. You also get access to some like other features, like different bots that Streamlabs has. Um, like those are the big things. Like um, I use Streamlabs OBS though. Um, I just find it's a little bit easier to use. I don't. I when I first got started, I did use one of the themes from Streamlabs to get started with. Um, but then I uh, like for overlays and all that kind of stuff. But then later I ended up buying my, my own custom like branded stuff from an artist on Fiverr. I'm working with an art artist on Fiverr to create uh, basically like a logo and like a whole like a branded theme for myself. So to get started so far, we've got your Twitch account free, OBS free, Streamlabs OBS also free, or you can pay money and go Streamlabs Prime, but we've really not spent so much money so far. So. Those are the two things that definitely we need to get started. What else do you need? Well, uh, you need some headphones, actually. Um, headphones, this is an area where there's, now you're getting into actual money um, and some cost. You don't wanna be using like built-in speakers on your monitor to stream because uh, the microphone that you're using to stream, uh, you know, for your, where your voice is coming through will pick up the audio output of the monitor and it'll create this like weird feedback for people where they'll hear the game audio twice, like once, from the stream and then delayed as the audio is then processed by the microphone and then restreamed. So you're gonna need some kind of basic headphones. So you could go super cheap here. Um, I've got any examples here to show you guys. So um, this is just a set of iPhone headphones, right? So these come free every time you buy an iPhone. Uh, pretty much every smartphone is gonna come with some sort of equivalent of this headphone, right? These are the iPhone, they're not USB type C, they're the Apple lightning adapter headphones. You could just, you could use these, um, you know, this won't plug directly into a PC, so you'd need some sort of adapter for this to adapt it to a three, either a three and a half millimeter headphone jack or to a traditional like U, like USB, either USB type C or uh, just regular USB port. Uh, but like this, it could be as simple as the headphones that came with your smartphone. In fact, there are a lot of big streamers who still use like simple headphones like this. Um, they haven't invested in like big crazy headphones. Um, and with respect to getting started with streaming, the audio quality that you hear is not the same thing as the audio quality that your audience is gonna hear as a broadcaster, like what actually gets sent to them. That that requires us to dive deeper into like audio codecs and other things to understand like what they're gonna hear. So this is really more about your like personal enjoyment of gaming, your personal enjoyment of hearing like the audio of what you're playing, right? So if you're playing a game that has Really awesome audio like these these cheap earbuds will be enough to get you started Just, you know they came with your phone or you can go and buy them you know like very much these are you know very cheap to go and buy um, and you can just get started right and like there you go but let's say you wanted something that um, you know like maybe sounds a little bit better uh, and maybe is a little bit and I hate to do this a little more gamery as it were so another option is to invest in gamer headphones so I've got a set here uh, as an example so these are a set of Corsair gamer headphones. What's nice about these is they have a built-in microphone. Uh, so that's a potential way to get started and save a little bit of money is using the built-in microphone on your headset. Now, it's not gonna be as great as a dedicated microphone, uh, but this could potentially be your solve for like your your AV. This is your essentially your AV solution for your stream. You know, you've got your like headset that you can hear, super comfortable, good quality audio, Right, these are like very adjustable, right? Uh, you can see like if I put these on and I use the microphone here, like I'm basically set. I can hear my game and I can communicate to my audience this way. And when I first got started streaming, this is exactly what I did. I used these exact headphones, actually, these Corsair headphones. Um, you know, there's a huge amount of like gaming headsets out on the market today. I don't want to do a deep dive into all the possible like headphones and gaming headphones that you could use, or even to say that gaming headphones are any better than uh, just like, you know, Bose headphones or, you know, some other set of headphones like uh, Steinhauser or Steinhauser headphones that you might buy, right? Uh, this is just like meant to more illustrate a point, which is, you know, with this, we had, we covered the audio that you could hear on the cheap, what came with your phone or just buy a set of these, right? Then we upgraded to a slightly better solution. And in addition to just having way better audios, you know, for yourself, for your game, you also get the integrated microphone solution, right? So that takes kind of like two birds with one stone. A lot of streamers, when they're first getting started, this is exactly what they start with. Either a wired or wireless set of gaming headphones with an integrated mic. Okay, 
So now we've spent a little bit of money either on some kind of a headset or some set of headphones like these. What's next? Well, um, the next one you might want to consider, uh, I think is really like a must have for streaming. It's a little bit hard for me to illustrate it on the video is a second monitor. Uh, using alt tab and alt tabbing between Streamlabs OBS and your game is just going to be way too frustrating of an experience for you. Uh, it's going to be constantly causing like uh, errors. You're going to get your streams going to look weird. Uh, it's going to cause interruptions as like you're trying to alt tab furiously, you know, find the thing, put it in focus. What you're going to also end up with is depending upon how you're doing your capture, you might end up with your Streamlabs software uh, or your OBS software actually being streamed to your audience in this sort of like inception, infinite recursion kind of thing where they're seeing your streaming software, which is then reflecting what it's seeing, which is a streaming software, and then just on into infinity, like looking through ever set, like smaller sets of like reflective mirrors, right? Um, so a second monitor is like, in my mind, a necessity for getting started. And I think it's something that is not enough people talk about. So I'll just say it, I think you need a second monitor. That doesn't mean that the second monitor needs to be as awesome as your primary monitor. Maybe for your primary monitor, you decide to invest in a really awesome 1440p, uh, you know, like high refresh rate, like maybe 120 hertz, 144 hertz, 165 hertz, um, you know, with very low, like, you know, input lag monitor to get started as your primary gaming display, because like that's what you see, right? That's that's what you're going to be gaming on all the time, and so you want the best like visual quality that your computer can can output. Um, maybe you went totally like, you know, for the best of the best, you bought a 4K gaming monitor, right? Um, that doesn't mean that your second monitor needs to be equal or the same monitor at all. In fact, you could just get by with a real cheap, like I literally, like my primary monitor is a nice Asus 1440p. I still think that's the sweet spot for gaming, by the way, 1440p. I think 4K gaming, um, the hardware requirements to get high refresh rates and 4K is still too intense. Like. Uh, you know, you might be able to play games 4K, but like hitting a consistent 60 FPS or, you know, try, or trying to go above that, trying to go to like 100 FPS or 144 FPS at 4K is uh, pretty much still unattainable. Um, you know, even if you invested in like dual 2080 uh, TIs and SLI mode and a really awesome CPU, you're still going to be like, one, you've invested a lot of money and two, the still not going to get the best results. So I still think 1440p is the best result. So I use a 1440p ASUS monitor, um, 144 hertz, overclockable up to 165 hertz. The only thing I wish the monitor had that it doesn't have as far as features is HDR. HDR would be nice. Um, but otherwise, it's a great monitor. My second monitor, it's just uh, a Dell, like simple 1080p. I have no idea what the refresh rate of it is. Um, it's not really a gaming monitor. It's just a second monitor. Primary monitor, display port, uh, secondary monitor, is just like regular old HDMI. It's not anything fancy. It's not HDMI 2.0 or 2.1 or anything like that. But that's enough. It's good enough for me, right? Second monitor does its job. I put my streaming software on my second monitor along with my, I usually will have my streaming software, Discord open. Um, I'll typically have Chrome open uh, to the Twitch uh, creator dashboard so I can watch my chat. I can do raids. I can, if I want to move the chat into like sub only mode or whatever, that's like easier to do that on the, Twitch creator dashboard. Second monitor, I'll typically also have my volume mixer for Windows there so that I can mute and like like control the sound and the audio. Like if I wanna mute, say like Spotify that I was using in the lobby and then switch to game audio, I can do that. All that's on the second monitor. Then on my primary monitor, I just have my game. Typically I'll run it in borderless window mode or not full screen mode. So that way I can move my mouse out of the game directly to the second monitor without having to alt tab. So you wanna look in your graphic settings when you're setting up a game for windowed or borderless, sometimes they'll call it windowed, full screen windowed, or borderless uh, mode. Um, just full screen means just that. Full screen means it's taking up the full screen, there's no border, and to get typically to get your mouse like unattached from it and over to your second screen, you have to do like alt tab or press the windows key or something really fast in order to like be able to get the mouse detached from that like display. So second monitor I think is absolutely required. Not enough people talk about it. You can get started without it. I got started without a second monitor. It was, I used uh, Windows and then I used multiple virtual desktops as a way to uh, like switch between like streaming software and uh, the game. But it was like way too hard to keep up with chat, way too hard to see what was going on. 
Um, I suppose other options, you know, other op alternatives, sort of combined alternatives and options there into like a new word. So I'm just going to stick with regular words. Uh, an alternative could be using like an iPad uh, or like a tablet and having that be uh, your Twitch dashboard and then you watch your chat there. Um, that's another option, but to me that's just that's just the second monitor. That's just the second display. Again, in fact, it's a less useful second display because you can't, there's so many things you can't do with that other monitor that you could do if it was connected to, or that second display is that you could do if it were connected to your computer. So I think second monitor. Okay, what's next on the list? So we've, you know, we've, we've invested a little bit of money in just a cheap El Cheapo second monitor. Trust me, you know, it's going to save you so much headache. It's gonna make your stream a lot better. Next, you might consider a better microphone. So earlier I talked about gaming headsets. I'll bring it back. I talked about gaming headsets that have built-in microphones like this, right? So this, this mic is great, right? It's totally sufficient for online gaming as far as like people being able to hear you uh, when you're playing a game, you know, if you're playing Destiny 2 or whatever with your friends, they can hear you very clearly just using this microphone. But if you think about yourself again as a broadcaster, the sound of your voice coming through to your audience is super important. So the next thing you might consider investing in is a dedicated microphone. I'm gonna show you my dedicated microphone here. So I have this guy. This is a, what's called a Blue Yeti. This is probably the most popular, it's actually quite heavy. This is actually probably the most popular um, microphone that I see streamers using. Um, this, I will set this up, like on my desk in front of my keyboard actually, uh, that way the the microphone won't pick up the uh, keyboard sounds, like the click click of the keys. Uh, you will see a lot of streamers that will mount this to like an arm, right? So you'll see like this is kind of like, it'll be positioned like over here, right? Uh, yeah, that way. Yeah, it'll be positioned that, like this. Um, and that's because like they've decided like they don't even want the vibration of anything from their desk coming through. Uh, and so they'll mount it to an arm. I just haven't gotten there yet. Um, that's like to me a very nice to have. I can just sit it in front of the keyboard and then I don't get the, the problem. Couple of things I'll just say about the Blue Yeti if you decide to invest in a Blue Yeti, just because it was a, it was a bit of a learning experience for me. Couple of things I see that people do wrong with this microphone all the time. Number one thing is they talk into this part of the microphone. They speak into it like, sort of like, like this, right? Like, hello, right? That's not the right way to speak into this microphone. You actually wanna speak in to its face, into the front right here. You wanna be talking here. So when you set up the microphone, you don't want it setting in such a way that it's like, say it's pointed like this, because then it's gonna pick up all the sound that's coming from your desk, all the vibration, movements of the mouse, it's gonna pick up the, like if you tap your desk, uh, or the key, like, you know, keyboard sounds are gonna come through like crystal clear. So you wanna make sure you're speaking into this. So you wanna have it sort of facing you this way, or if you have it mounted to an arm, have it setting this way. Other things that, are, that come up a lot, on the back of this, guy, I don't know if you can see it super clearly, I'll try to bring it close to the camera. There's the there's this dial back here. And what this dial is, is what's called the pattern. Without getting too technical, um, I'll just give you the right answer. Uh, what you wanna set your pattern to, if you're using a Blue Yeti for streaming, is the one that, it kinda looks like a heart. Again, I hope that's coming through and you can see it. It's the one that looks like a heart. So you've got kinda like the two circles that are connected, a circle, a heart, and then this one that kinda looks more like a figure eight. Here, you want to set it to the heart. Um, that will give you the best audio quality for live streaming games. Uh, the other thing is the actual what's called gain of the microphone, and that's this other dial back here. See, it's gain. And so gain is, for lack of a better way of thinking about it, like the microphone's volume. It's how much it's hearing you, right? So if you turn up the gain on this monitor, or sorry, this microphone, if you turn, if you crank the gain on this microphone, this is a very powerful microphone up to its maximum gain. This microphone will hear what your family member is talking about or watching on television in a different room of your house, in a different floor of your house, absolutely clearly. Like, it's unbelievable how powerful this microphone is. And since you're live streaming, you probably are gonna have this microphone pretty close to your face. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and turn that gain down quite a bit. You can see I've got my gain turned down almost to the point of being off. Like. I could turn it a little bit more and it would be off, but I basically have the gain set to about a pretty minimal value. That will keep your voice from coming through in such an overpowering way uh, that it just like people can't hear the game or anything else, or they're just hearing your voice plus tons of background noise of everything that's going on in your house. So turn the gain down, set your 
mode to be the one that sort of looks like a heart. Make sure you're speaking into the front of the microphone, not the top of the microphone, and position it in front of your keyboard, not behind your keyboard. If you position it in front of your keyboard and say the keyboard's between, say the keyboard was between me and the mic, so it's right here, and the microphone is listening here, you'll get hardly any keyboard sound coming through at all, maybe none, if you turn the gain down enough. Uh, if you position the keyboard between you and the microphone, so imagine the microphone was facing me and my keyboard was here, it's gonna be picking up every bit of the keyboard sound. That's why maybe thinking about that arm or mounting it in some way. Okay, so microphone. So we talked about microphones. Okay, that's, I would say, we could stop right there and say, that's sufficient for getting started. Like, you've got headphones, you've got your Twitch account, you've got your microphone, either built into your headset or separate dedicated microphone. Now let's talk about, do you want to have your face on uh, your Twitch, like, broadcast or not? So there's two schools of thought about this. Um, one school of thought says, well, I'm just not ready to put my face out there for the world to see. In which case, no, you don't need a face cam. If it's a privacy concern for you, you don't need a face cam. Don't worry about it. The other is, I'm okay having my face out there for people to see. And how does having my face out there affect the like perception of my channel and perception of my content? And the fact of the matter is that you will grow uh, your audience quite a bit more if they can see your face, if they can connect with you as a person and see all the like little funny like reactions you have. Like let's say you're playing a horror game and you get really scared. You're like, oh no, and you jump back. There's a certain amount of that that comes through in just your voice, but a lot of that comes through in your face. So investing in a face cam and actually streaming your face on stream would be the next, would be the first what I would call optional requirement. It's optional in the sense that you don't need it at all but if you do decide to go forward, I would call it like required. Like it's not like a nice to have effectively. So what do I, what's my solution here, right? For uh, face cams, there's, you could, this is another one of those like similar to the headphones or the microphone where the continuum, the, which is to say the range is very large. You could go uh, and get, you know, a mirrorless, amazing camera, uh, you know, pointing at your face, um, and you know, like if you're shooting a lot of YouTube content and you wanna shoot in 4K and a bunch of other stuff, that thing's gonna be awesome, super reusable, you can take it around, you, it's you know great. If you're just streaming games, you just wanna get started, you don't need that. What you need is something like this. This is a Logitech webcam, it's 1080p. This is probably, again, going back to the thing about the Blue Yeti being the most popular choice for streamers getting started uh, for microphones, this is like the de facto most popular choice for streamers getting started with webcam. Uh, so this just, it's USB, you has this little arm, so you can adjust it to mount it onto your uh, top, like onto your monitor. Um, you can see it's 1080, I don't know if you can see very clearly, but it's 1080p. Uh, and so you, with this, you can, you know, send your face through your stream in either 1080p or 720. I'm obviously not using it right now because I'm showing it to you and I'm shooting this YouTube video. So I'm actually using Believe it or not, I'm using my iPhone to actually shoot this YouTube video. Uh, iPhone can shoot in 4K 60. It, that's plenty good enough for YouTube content. And this is more than sufficient and good enough for uh, Twitch. Okay, so now we have got all our bases covered. We've got our microphone, we've got our headphones, we've got our second monitor, we've got our Twitch, we got our webcam, right? We got all our bases covered. Uh, we're ready to get started. So what would be some nice to haves? Like what would be like one or two just like cool, nice to haves um, if you think about like upgrading your stream down the road. So there are, there's one in particular I wanna talk about that I think is most the most worthwhile nice to have. And that is a, a actual separate dedicated lighting source. So I actually use the Elgato uh, key light. I'm gonna show you guys the box because I'm using my key light right now. I can't show you my key light very easily. Uh, so this is the box for the Elgato key light. Here we go. It's like I'm presenting something here on the on the Price is Right. I feel like, but this is exactly what it what it looks like. It's a big light and it's super bright, uh, and it's uh, also very customizable. So you can install the Elgato software on your computer, and then you can like you know change the you know all the different levels of brightness, the warmth, you know the different colors that come through on the light. Uh, adding lighting to your stream and adding just like a dedicated light really should be your first like, okay, I'm ready for a cool new upgrade, at least in my opinion. 
you know, there's a lot of things you could view it. You could do a stream deck, which is like a little mini keyboard that you use to change scenes and stuff. Uh, you could do a capture card on your PC, which then lets you capture games from your PlayStation, your Xbox, your Switch, you know, I guess presumably Stadia if you wanted to do something that was like, you know, look at me, I'm streaming my game and I'm streaming my game back to you. It's like maybe that could be a, a neat niche for you. I don't know. But I think the most worthwhile first upgrade is lighting. It will make you stand out more on your stream. Uh, you will come through on the webcam. It'll enable you to do a lot better YouTube content creation. Um, just having a dedicated light. It might seem silly. You might think like, why do I need a dedicated light? Like, there's, like my room has a light. There's a light in the ceiling. There's a lot of ceiling light in this room that's turned on right now. Uh, but being able to like properly illuminate your face uh, and in your stream and in your YouTube content is what gives you that almost like 3D effect where it's like you're almost like you're coming off the screen. And so don't discount the value of lighting. And I'm not saying you have to buy an Elgato light or anything like that. I'm just saying an Elgato light is the light that I chose, but I think the first nice to have, the first optional like cool upgrade that you should go for uh, is a dedicated light. And maybe over time you could consider really think about your lighting setup and really go nuts with lighting as possible set of like upgrades in the future. Maybe you do multiple key lights, like one on each side and maybe one behind you. You try to get rid of the shadow that's being cast on you from the lights in front. And that would give you like a really cool like way to stand out in your stream. But that's like, you know, we're getting, we're getting almost into the realm of like professional lighting at that point. Um, a single Elgato key light goes a long way. Okay, so everybody, we've covered a lot in this video. This video was, again, longer than I wanted it to be. Um, I just really want to give you guys, you know, really practical, pragmatic advice. So you can find me on twitch.tv slash legendary loot socks. Uh, Twitter, I'm at loot socks. I'm on Instagram as legendary loot socks. Facebook, legendary loot socks. Um, definitely come check me out on Twitch. Um, I stream every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, variety streamer. Um, I just play the games that I like. I stream with all the equipment that you guys saw today. So you can jump in my chat. You can ask me, hey, Loot Socks, how's it going with that light? Hey, Loot Socks, how's it going with that microphone? And the last thing I'll say is if you enjoyed this content, please like, subscribe, and ring that little bell for notifications anytime I go live with a new video. And until the next one, uh, this is Legendary Loot Socks. Thanks for hanging out and good luck with your Twitch streaming and good luck with your content creation. Catch you guys later.